Hi, Dale coming to you from our laundry room today, and hopefully today I'm gonna to be able to save some of you guys some money. We have Whirlpool Cabrillo washer and dryer, and it seems to be working fine, but the dryer, the start button, it isn't doing its one and only job. The start button is broke. You can tell it's no longer working as it doesn't give any kind of an audible click or any haptic feedback when you press it like the other buttons do. So let me show you how I fix mine. Maybe it'll help you. Come on, let's go. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is not die. So unplug the power. Next, you're gonna need to pull the dryer out so that you have some room to work. The problem is, is I didn't have any room to get to the back, so I decided I'd just jump. On my dryer model, there are only two screws in the back holding the user console on, so I removed both of them one on either side of the back of the user console. Now just pop the user console off by rotating it forward from the back. The user control board is located behind this plastic back. Remove the three screws and then using a flat head screwdriver, unlatch the two clips that is holding it on. Remove and set it aside. Here's a pro tip for you. Make your life much easier and don't follow my exact workflow. Instead, there's one plug that you'll see a bit later that connects the entire user control board to the dryer. Unplug that and take the entire user console to a table where you'll have much more room to work much more comfortably. Now you can see the user control board, but before you can remove that, you'll need to remove the dryer knob. First, simply pull the knob off from the front of the dryer console. Then, on the control board, pinch in the small tab that's on the knob connector and rotate the entire connector a quarter turn counterclockwise. Using a flat screwdriver, pop the circuit board out. There are three main tabs across the bottom of the board. Just work the screwdriver into those openings and carefully pop it out. Once you get part of the board loose, then work the screwdriver around popping out the rest. You may need to use a bit of pressure, but it should come out fairly easily. Once you have all the tabs loose, lift the bottom of the board and remove. Here I'm inspecting the board and I don't see any breaks or cracks. Both the cancel and the start button seem to give a nice sturdy click when I press them. Hindsight 2020, I should have just plugged in the dryer at this point and tested the button by pressing it directly on the board. Luckily, everything was okay anyways. Looking at the plastic housing for the circuit board, I see the problem. The piece of plastic that holds the button in place and bends when being pressed to make contact with the button on the circuit board broke. Now when I press the start button on the control panel, it's not making contact with the button on the circuit board therefore will not start. My thought for fixing this issue was to simply take the plastic button and super glue it directly to the inside of the start button cover. When I press the start button on the control panel, it would cause the plastic button to move in and press the button on the circuit board. At least, that's what I thought would happen. Turns out the button on the circuit board does not line up with the plastic button. It's offset. So I used a small piece of a paint stir stick, drilled a hole into it to fit over the button, and cut a notch into it to fit into the space. Since acetone will unstick super glue, I put some acetone on a Q-tip to rub under the button to loosen the super glue to remove the button. I also promptly knocked the acetone can over and spilled it onto the plastic housing. It certainly discolored it, but doesn't look like it did any harm. Attaching the circuit board back into the housing is easy. Simply put it in at an angle to seat below the tabs at the top and then snap it down into place. Now it's just reversing the order of everything I did to remove the board earlier. I place the knob connector into the circuit board and turn a quarter turn clockwise, then snap the back plastic piece into place and finish by reinserting the three screws to securely fasten that back plastic protective cover. 
plug the user control interface back into the control board to give everything power. It only fits in one way and only fits in one place. Put the user panel back into place by rolling it back over the control board and snapping it in place. Friends, it's starting to look like a dryer again. Now tighten down the two screws that secure the user panel to the dryer. The last step of reassembly is to put the control panel knob back on. Start with the dust washer and then the knob itself. The knob only goes on one way so you can't mess up the alignment. And now plug it back in. Nothing is done until a final successful test. Oh yeah. No more wearing wet underwear for me. Hashtag, no more wearing wet underwear. So there you have it. One dryer, one fixed. And no, you don't need to fix anything on your viewing device. My legs really are wider than the dryer. I'd rate this probably at about a two out of five on difficulty. The most difficult part really was just working in a confined space. That was probably the hardest part. Other than that, really was not too difficult. I did tear the cover to the start button a little bit, but that's not a big deal. In reality, I don't think I even needed to super glue that back of the button in as the circuit board fits pretty snugly and I think it would have held everything in just fine. This saved me a lot of money. I would have had to call a repair person, have them come out, make me buy new parts and then install them. Probably would have been several hundred bucks, maybe even approaching the cost of just buying a whole new dryer. This way really didn't cost me anything just but a little bit of time. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, give me a like. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down, but do me a favor and put a comment in and tell me why you don't like it. Helps me out a lot. I'll make better videos next time that maybe you will like. Leave a comment below if you think there was a better way to do something. I always appreciate constructive criticism. Not a problem at all. If you haven't yet subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you would. If you think this video would help anybody else you know, go ahead and hit the share button so that they can see it as well. Anyways, until next time, see ya.